How's it everyone? I'm Ulfganger and welcome to the very first episode of This Week in WoW, where we will catch up on the WoW news of the week and any other interesting WoW things that I happen to come across while trawling the internet. In today's episode, we'll be covering the 9.1 flying purchase clarification, Battle.net goes cross-region, the Sinrunner Blanche mount can now fly, the Phylactery Shard Raid Skip, a 16k render of Azeroth's map, some animated wallpapers, the Judgment Short, this week's Mythic Plus list, and some unrelated tech news where Fastly causes the internet to break. So to get started, the 9.1 flying purchase that Blizzard put out a week or so ago was clarified on Thursday with them updating the blog post to say instead of this will allow your account to purchase the riding skill needed, they've now updated it with your account with expert riding skill to fly in the Shadowlands zones. The purchase that they meant originally was the fact that every character on your account needs to have the expert riding skill, which is actually the base skill needed to fly in any of the other zones, and most of the characters on your account will probably have that anyway. So for like 99% of the people, it's not going to be a very big thing. So when one of your characters completes the quest line, and you get the memories of the sunless skies that will unlock flying on shadowlands for all your characters that have the ability to actually use flying mounts it's not like you need to now explicitly go out and buy an extra thing moving into the battle.net app itself blizzard have now released a, an update to it that makes battle.net cross region no longer will you have to change region to actually speak to your friends in a different region to your own. They have now made it that all chat is now just one region. They say they have done this now to make it easier for everybody to chat to each other and they've even made it now cross-platform. So people on console and on PC can now also chat to each other. With this update, they've now also made it that Overwatch is now also cross-platform, meaning players on PC and console can now verse each other instead of only those on their respective platforms. Going back to the PTR, it was discovered that the Sinrana Blanche mount has had its mount type changed from 230 to 248, which means that it can now fly. When 9.1 drops, you will be able to fly the Red Ghost Horse all over the Shadowlands and the rest of Azeroth. Staying on the PTR, an interesting item has popped up on one of the recent 9.1 builds, which suggests that there may be a Raid Skip item coming in the new 9.1 patch. The Phylactery Shard, which is an epic quality item, which also happens to come in three versions, one each respective for the different levels of difficulty in raiding and this will allow the people what well, seems to allow the people who get it to have some form of skip it's not a confirmed situation right at the moment but based on the wording and the tooltip this is the same tooltip we've seen in past raid skips so we'll see what actually happens when it gets to launch day but there's no if this item does actually stick around it's a very good chance that this is actually a raid skip item. Now, moving out of the game itself and into the realm of fan art, we have a 16k render of the map of Azeroth in 3D. A Reddit user by the name of Kraithner? Krunia. Krunia? Kraithner. Kraithner. I apologize if you watch this video and I'm butchering this name. I really apologize. But the we'll go with Kraithner. Made a 16k render of the complete map of Azeroth. From what I was able to read, this person has a nice NVIDIA 3090 and it took a whole 5 minutes to render at 16k. Now, I don't know about you, 
but that's fantastic. Hell, I mean, if you could render this type of map in five minutes, that is some fantastic hardware that you've got, really and truly. And this is made at over 450 million triangles, and every model is at full resolution. They didn't do any downscaling or none of that. This is to the T. The only thing that is not on this map, which I'm actually quite thankful for, is the lack of trees. So, like, the forested areas are bald. But, again, I'm actually quite glad that that is the case, because otherwise you were just never going to see anything. But, look at the detail. I mean, you can zoom right in and see all the different bits and bobs of what's happening on the map. They even included the areas such as the Wandering Isles, the Dark Moon Island, and even Exiles Reach. Then another Reddit user by the name of Riker9944 made some awesome wallpapers using Wallpaper Engine. One that is faction themed. One that is Arthas themed. And then a Stormwind and an Ogrimmar themed one. Then, a group of people who call themselves Team True Potential made a three minute animated short on a paladin versus a rogue out in Lordaeron. This short video took the team five months or about 1,500 hours to make. Now, if I have to look at the content of the video itself, I mean, the animation, the clarity, the quality, everything is, is spectacular. I do however feel that the Paladin was maybe a little bit too like, I'm just gonna kill you. Because all that that rogue was doing was just kind of looting a long forgotten cart. He, that's very unlikely that the rogue actually caused the cart to lose it, so he's just tidying up if you would and the paladin happened to come across him but well at the end of the day <laughs> the paladin came up short then lastly in the wow news this week's mythic plus list the affixes this week are spiteful grievous fortified and prideful so the dungeons that you're going to want to complete this week are your Mists of Turner Scythe and Halls of Atonement. If you can't get into those, your B-listers are the Necrotic Wake and Plagueform, with Spires of Ascension coming in as your C-listers. And lastly, in unrelated tech news that happened this week, on Tuesday, Fastly, a content delivery network for Amazon Web Services, had a software bug which caused most of the internet to grind to a halt. On Tuesday when I noticed that it happened, I was actually busy in Reddit and I was trying to reply to somebody's post and all of a sudden it told me, oops, something went wrong. Now, I live in Africa and internet dying is an all too common thing here. So when stuff like this happens, I always go down the troubleshooting list to see is it my internet is it my area's internet and thankfully enough due to my work and just my connections I have connectivity right across the country so I can check and see if it's my internet or what the heck's actually going on and I checked all my normal sources and I couldn't get into reddit I couldn't get into twitch stack exchange all of them just were dead and they all gave me exactly the same error and I thought okay well maybe it's the under sea cables or something that come into to come into South Africa that's must have been damaged stuff like that's happened before until I saw on Twitter that a guy in Australia had exactly the same error trying to get into Etsy and that's when I was just like mm -mm, this this is a bigger problem and then about maybe like an hour in I started to see that hang on this is actually a global problem and 
obviously much later on I've discovered that it was actually Fastly that was to blame and yeah so June 8 2021 was the day the internet stood still and that's it for today's episode thank you very much for watching if you found it useful please consider leaving a like and a comment and if you have any questions that you would like me to try and find an answer for besides those about the meaning of life Hit me up in the comments and I will see what I can do to find an answer for you. Cheers guys!